We've had a few requests for a video on transformer calculations, and this video is a result of that. Transformers are easy to understand and to perform calculations on, if a few basic rules are understood. As with most calculations, understanding what information you already have and knowing what it is that you need to work out is always going to be important. So in this video, we'll look at the two basic formulas for transformer calculations and then work through some example questions. The sort of things you might be asked in technical exams for electrical services and electronics. These are the two formulas that we will use. You absolutely must know these formulas and know how to rearrange and manipulate them to your advantage. If you know these formulas, you are well on your way to getting the right answers. A reminder of what a basic transformer is. There is an input or primary side and an output or secondary side. Most of the weight in a transformer is the ferrous core around which the primary and secondary coils or windings are arranged. As well as the primary and secondary wiring connections, there will usually be an earth connection to the transformer. For the purposes of clarity and ease of understanding, we've left the earth connection off the drawings in this video. There is a primary winding and a secondary winding, wound onto formers that are arranged to be physically close to the ferrous core for maximum electromagnetic transfer of energy. And the number of turns on the primary and secondary is known as the turns ratio. The ratio of input turns to the output turns determines the output voltage in relation to the primary or supply voltage. These are labelled as NP for primary turns and NS for secondary turns. The turns ratio is simply NS divided by NP. The number of turns on the secondary side divided by the turns on the primary side. In this example, NS is 500 and NP is 1000. 500 divided by 1000 is 0 0.5 or a half, a 50% reduction between input and output. The turns ratio sets the voltage ratio, input to output, and the formula is Vs over Vp. In our example, Vp, the primary voltage, is 240 volts, and 50% of this is 120 volts, the output voltage. Because the output voltage is less than the input, we call this a reducing transformer. The output voltage is reduced. This slide shows an increasing transformer. The output voltage is increased. The secondary winding has double the turns of the primary, so the output voltage will be two times the input, or double. 240 volt input, 480 volts output. Observe that NS over NP is equal to VS over VP. And we can have a transformer with the same number of turns on each side. Shown here is 240 volts in and 240 volts out. This would be typical of a bathroom shaver socket where we still want 240 volts output but we want to separate the secondary side from any earth reference, thereby reducing the shock risk. How does all this affect the current on each side of the transformer? We cannot have something for nothing. If we have an increase in one parameter, then we must have a reduction in another. If we have an increasing transformer with a 240 volt input and a 480 volt output, what effect does this have on the available current? In this case, there will be a corresponding reduction in the available output current. We say that Vs over Vp is equal to Ip over Vs. Notice that with the voltage, the S is on the top and the P on the bottom. But for the current I, we have P on the top and S on the bottom. Remember this, don't get it mixed up. Now we can make a formula for power or watts. If we rearrange this top formula, what will we get? 
Start by moving VP to the top on the right hand side and then move IS to the top on the left hand side. We now have VS times IS equals VP times IP, a formula for power or watts. Let's put all these formulas for turns, volts and amps together into some kind of order. We have NS over NP equals VS over VP. And we have VS over VP equals IP over IS. So we could combine these into one long formula as shown, which we've called formula number one. We can do more with this formula. We might make a calculation where we need VP on the top or IS on the top, for example. All we need to do is to turn the whole formula over all three blocks and everything will stay in balance. Formula number two is for power or watts. V times I is power in watts and we should already be familiar with the power triangle shown on the right. In a perfect transformer with no losses, the watts on the primary side will always equal the watts on the secondary side. The power or wattage is the same on both sides of the transformer. This is an important factor to remember and is a good starting point for many calculations. If we know the power on one side, we know it on the other. And if we also know either a voltage or a current, then we can start to work out the rest. So here are the two formulas. Knowing these and how to use them will help a lot when making transformer calculations and we can put these into practice right now. In these practice questions, we will give you a question similar to technical exam questions. To get the most from them, pause the video and attempt an answer yourself. The next few slides will give you the worked solutions to the question. There are three questions in total and each question has several parts. This is question number one and there are two parts to it. The transformer circuit as shown has an input voltage of 240 volts and an output voltage of 24 volts with a 20 amp resistive load. First part A. We need to find the minimum size fuse that we should choose for F1 on the primary side of the circuit. And then part B. We must calculate the wattage of the primary side. I always start by making a small table as shown on the right on the screen with all the information that I know and what I need to know. The drawing below shows the circuit. If your exam question does not have a drawing, then draw the circuit. Pause the video now and have a go yourself. Here's the calculation for part A. The minimum fuse size will be the current flowing through the primary side or IP. We know both voltages VP and VS and we know the secondary current IS. By rearranging formula number one, we have IP is equal to VS over VP and then multiplied by IS. Inserting numbers into the equation, we have an answer of 2 amps for IP. The minimum size fuse should be 2 amps. And we've ignored inrush currents in this question and kept the calculations very simple. Now for part B of question 1, the wattage or power on the primary side. We know from formula number 2 that the primary side power will always match the load, the power in the secondary side. Again, we are dealing with a perfect transformer without losses. So WP will always equal WS. We have a primary voltage given to us as 240 volts. And we've just calculated the primary current IP as 2 amps. 240 multiplied by 2 is 480 watts for the power drawn by the primary side. Our answers then. Part A, the minimum fuse size is 2 amps and we found this by calculating IP. And part B, WP is the primary side wattage at 480 watts. On to question 2 now. Again, pause the video 
after reading the question. Make your own notes, drawings, table or whatever and attempt an answer yourself. The question tells us that a transformer has 1,000 turns on the primary winding and 500 turns on the secondary winding. The primary input voltage, VP, is 120 volts and the secondary current, IS, is 5 amps. This time there are three paths to the answer, A, B and C. This doesn't seem like a lot of information for us to find the answers, but actually it is more than enough. Pause the video and make an attempt. It's all good practice. Part A asks if this is a step up or a step down transformer. Very easy to answer. Look at the turns ratio and here we have both NP and NS. The primary turns are greater than the secondary turns. So this is a reducing transformer. The output voltage will be less than the input voltage. To show this mathematically, NS divided by NP is 0 0.5. It is less than 1, so the output voltage will be smaller than the input voltage. It will be reduced. Part B asks us to calculate the output or secondary voltage VS. We know the turns ratio, NP and NS, and we know the primary voltage, VP. It is now just a case of a simple rearrangement of formula number 1, and then put the numbers in. If this is a reducing transformer, the output voltage, VS, should be smaller than the input, which in fact it is, at just 60 volts. And now, part C. What is the input current, IP? Again, use formula number one. We know both voltages and we know IS, the secondary current. By rearranging to make IP the subject, we can now enter the numbers into the equation. The input current, IP, is 2.5 amps. The three answers are shown here together. Part A, it is a step-down transformer. Part B, VS, the output voltage is 60 volts. And part C, IP, the input or primary current is 2.5 amps. Because the input voltage is bigger than the output voltage, the input current will be smaller than the output current. Remember that voltage and current move in opposite directions. As one goes up, the other goes down, because the wattage on both sides must stay the same. And on to question number three. There are four parts to this question, and approached in order, you will have all the information that you need to answer the questions. Remember to pause the video and attempt the question yourself. A step-down transformer with 1,000 turns on the primary winding has a turns ratio of 10 to 1. The input voltage is 240 volts, and the primary current is 1 amp. The output voltage, Vs, is 23.9 volts, and the output current, Is, is 9.8 amps. Make yourself a little table, as shown on the right, and have a go yourself. For this question, you will also need to know that the transformer efficiency can be calculated using the formula Ws divided by Wp, as shown in the grey box at the bottom. Part A. We need to find NS, the number of turns on the secondary winding. We know NP, the primary winding, and we know the turns ratio is 10 to 1. NP is 10 times bigger than the secondary, or the secondary, NS, is 10 times smaller than NP. If NP is 1000, then NS has just 100 turns. And that's our answer. Part B now, calculate the input wattage, WP. We have our table on the right with all the information from the question entered into it. We know from the power law triangle that WP equals VP multiplied by IP. And we have both of those values already. 240 volts multiplied by 1 amp is an input power 
of 240 watts. WP equals 240 watts. Now for part C, find the output wattage or WS. This is just the same calculation as before. We know VS and we know IS. Just multiply the two together to arrive at the watts. 23.9 volts multiplied by 9.8 amps is 234.22 watts. WS is 234.22 watts. Finally, part D. Determine the efficiency of the transformer. All transformers will lose a small amount of energy. It's one of the reasons they get warm. So how efficient is this one? Efficiency is calculated by WS divided by WP. Secondary wattage divided by primary wattage. This is 234.22 divided by 240 and gives us an answer of 0 0.976. If we want this as a percentage, multiply it by 100. 0 0.976 multiplied by 100 equals 97.6% efficiency and that's our answer. All four answers then. Part A. How many turns are on the secondary side, NS? 100 turns. Part B. Calculate the input wattage WP and this is 240 watts. Part C. Find the output wattage WS which is 234.22 watts. And part D. Determine the efficiency of the transformer and this is 0 0.976 or 97.6% efficiency. And just to recap, here are the two formulas that you will need for transformer calculations in electrotechnical exams. The top formula is the turns, voltage and current formula and this can be turned upside down but you must turn the whole thing, the whole formula, so that all the factors retain their relative positions. And the power or wattage of a transformer can be found with the bottom formula. And do remember that in a perfect transformer with no losses, the wattage on the primary side will always match the wattage on the secondary side. And there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. We hope you understand now that transformer calculations are not as bad as they sound. Take your time, be methodical, write down what you know from the question and work your way through the question. Good luck and thank you for watching, it really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.